If I hit this button, uh -huh. boom, the whole program's gonna start. Okay, well hit it. All right. Something completely different. Smoke. Medical. Weed every day. The following thoughts on Hoppy Hour represent Brian Hoppy and Plastic. Listener discretion is advised. Live from Tampa Bay, you are tuned in to Hoppy Hour. He's the voice of a generation that got screwed by the baby boomers. Welcome back to Hoppy Hour. Hoppy Hour. Hoppy Hour. Hoppy Hour starts in four. Three, two, hoppy, hoppy, hoppy. This is Hoppy Hour with Hoppy. Ah. Ah. Where we at? Ah. Always going in. Never doubt it, never worry about the dollar Need a source or trending topic Be the hottest, search about us Competition microscopic, never copied I'm a giant rolling weed up, now we flying H-O P-P-E H-O P-P-E H-O P-P-E You already know how we are in the system This is Hoppy Hour I am your host Ryan Hoppy Hanging out with you probably for the next hour and a half or so. You can always call me and leave me a voicemail. 856-49-HOPPY. It's 856-494-6773. You can tweet at me at Ryan Hoppy Radio. And you can always email me, Ryan Hoppy Radio at gmail.com. If this is your first time listening to my show, my name is Ryan Hoppy and I am the host of this in-studio circus. You never know what we might talk about. One second, I could be talking about the fact that I was stuck in traffic on the Gandhi Bridge here in Tampa Bay. Or I could be talking about Donna Kelsey. But I am now back in St. Petersburg. I spent two nights at my friend's house in Tampa. And my cat's still over there. But I drove two hours over the bridge. Just so that I could speak to you, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I am recording at the top secret Happy Hour Studios, the beautiful Personify Studios. It's not so it's not so secret. Brought to you by Topher Morrison, one of the best guys around. So I drove two hours to come here. And um, there's this weird thing that like whenever people are in traffic in Tampa, it feels like everyone's going under the speed limit. Like when you're in a major city like Atlanta or Chicago, there's more of like a steady flow where it feels like people are trying to get somewhere. But it literally took me an hour to go across the whole bridge. And now I know as well that this is post hurricane. So we're not in the best conditions. Mm -hmm. But it's weird how once you get off the bridge, then everything's normal. It's almost like everyone feels like they must be in traffic when they're on the bridge. And then someone almost ran me off the road. It was a delightful time. I flicked them off. I usually don't like flicking off people. I'm not about that vibe. But man, when you almost run me off the road after a hurricane, you can go F yourself. And then again, as I discussed on my show yesterday, but I'll say it again, my cat over and over again when i was at my friend's house it's like she wants to let me know at 4 a.m it's never during the day during the day she sleeps but at night meow 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 over and over again and i'm just like shut up and then my friend also has a 15 year old cat named chloe and um luna was like hissing at chloe i'm like bitch you're not even in your own house <laughs> you've never been to this house and you're acting like you run it. I literally yelled at my cat this morning because I got up at 7.15 and I had a stomach ache because I'm in ketosis because I'm trying to lose weight. So when I'm in, keto when I'm in ketosis at all times, I uh, always feel like I have to go to the bathroom. So it's just disgusting. So I got up at 7.15 thinking that I was going to have to go work an event um, today. And then it got canceled last minute, which is fine, whatever. They were probably waiting till last minute to see if the bridges were going to get opened or not. So I wasn't really mad about waiting for the event to begin or not. But 
at like 7.45 a.m. as I'm like really cranky and tired and I don't feel well, my cat just begins hissing at my friend's cat and I'm like, who raised you? And I'm like, oh, wait, I did. <laughs> and I was trying to find a video of my cat meowing from when um, I took her to the vet uh, four years ago. But I'm going to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, the search feature on Twitter is absolutely a joke now. I don't know why Elon Musk has to touch everything that he ever makes, but it just feels like everything was working, everything was fine, and now all of a sudden, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I used to be able to type in my uh, username and then a word, and then I'd be able to find a video. Luckily, I was able to find it on Facebook just now. This is a video of what it sounds like when my cat meows. This is from when she almost died four years ago. Mm-hmm. Right here. I just went back and forth with that. That wasn't in the video. But can you imagine, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this meowing in your night, in your ear the whole night. This is what uh, Carl from Who Are These Podcasts sounds like to me. Yeah. 856-49-HAPPY. That's 856-494-677. Oh, Luna. Let's watch it from the beginning one more time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's the bad one. <laughs> oh, my cat is so messed up. She was a runt when she was born, so she was left behind. So it kind of describes her vibe sometimes. She's just a little off. I don't know. My poor cat. 856-49-HOPPY. It's 856-494-6779. It's time for Hoppy's Inbox, only on Hoppy Hour with Ryan Hoppy. Oh, yeah. I love reading my fan mail. Only thing I had to do, because some of it's not nice with the fan mail, is I have to turn off the notifications on my YouTube, because I don't even want to see a positive or a negative comment before I go to bed on my YouTube video. That's a, I'll deal with that during the day thing. I try to now look at social media at night. It gets me too hyped up. But I got a few critiques of happy hour, which I'm always down for. I mean, how are you going to get better if you don't get critiqued by anonymous trolls that listen to bad podcasts because they like to make fun of people? Mm -hmm. All right. Carl from Who Are These Podcasts is a bully. Fine. Whatever. Won't argue but he's much funnier and a better broadcaster than this Hoppy fella. Carl physically looks like a nerd for sure, but Hoppy has the nerd gene, which is identified by the cadence and tone of his voice. Also identified by lame jokes used unironically. Guys like Hoppy think they're pro broadcasters because they've been doing it for 25 years or whatever. No, I was in preschool 25 years ago. I had never played baseball. I might have played baseball for 25 years, but that doesn't mean I'm a first baseman for the Dodgers. You stink, Hoppy. Sorry. It's like, if you're going to write something to me, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, don't say sorry at the end. Just stay with your line. Another comment. Come on, play it. If you're any good. You don't have one person coming to defend you in 10 markets or four podcasting networks you claim to be looking, you claim to be on. Hey, man, look, I'm a regular guy with a regular job, not some teenage troll or something. No, you're just a boomer troll. If you truly make a big boy salary from podcasting that pays you well, then good for you. I can't give you crap for that. I'm not a who are these podcast fanboy, by the way. Yeah, you are. I just like him for ripping on Stuttering John, Steel Toe. But your humor is very corny and not creative. Mm. He says, for boomers, it feels like. What's funny is my audience is 18 to 34-year-old women. Mm -hmm. Women love me. That's all that matters. 
I ain't on this planet to get the approval of men. No, no, no. Nothing beats the approval of a woman just laying next to you, hanging out. Oh, this has been so much fun. This publicity stunt I did. <laughs> All my true friends know that I actually don't care. I just did it for trolling. You guys troll everybody out there. I'll troll you. <laughs> Eight five six forty nine happy. It's eight five six four nine four six seven seven three. You can tweet at me at Ryan Happy Radio, and you can always email me Ryan Happy Radio at gmail.com. This show is for the hardworking average Joe and Jane that grind in life. I don't care if you're listening in the U.S. or the U.K. As long as you're listening, that's all that matters. We will be right back on Happy Hour after this. Do not touch that radio dial or that podcasting platform. However the hell you're listening to my show, known as Happy Hour. We'll be right back. Hang on. RyanHoppyRadio.com. Happy Hour will be right back. Whenever we're going outside, um, we all I smell is poop. As a reminder, if you don't feel like listening to this next song, you can skip over it. But Ryan Hoppy of Hoppy Hour takes pride in his selection, so stick around, folks. White socks, fitted caps, posted on the block, 30 shot clip hanging. This ain't a rap trend, shot town, bim bang. Shootouts every night, they complaining that they can't sleep. It's the church and the liquor store all on the same street. Rain, sleet, snow, man. I'm a hustle, cocaine, all sales, final. I'm a product of this dope game. Shot is got no aim, bullets got no name. Cluckers dancing in the line like they on Soul Train. We don't care about blue lights, come take a picture. Still tipping, that's the day of a Chicago yeah. nigga. This the city of the wind. Yeah. Niggas on the corner trying to win. Chicago nigga. Stay hustling in the snow. snow. Niggas even hustling in the snow. Yeah. You see yeah. them blue lights in the air. Cameras everywhere. We don't give a fuck, we still tipping. Chicago nigga. Where they hustle in the snow, snow. Niggas even hustle in the snow Chicago yeah. nigga yeah. These cops crooked in Chicago Daily took them out them Crown Vix And bought them Tahoes yeah. In traffic I don't panic when I see them police lights what? I got them pigs in my pockets yeah. Like Jody White Hustle in that white snow yeah. Temperature is ice cold ice My cold. workers serving with them cameras on a light pole Gangsta disciples Black stones, BDs The biggest street gang is the CPD the sleeves on my triple goose smell like gunpowder. A hawk blowing like a car horn stuck in rush hour. Yeah, the Swiss cheese you drive a side door. This how it is, this how we live in Chicago, nigga. This the city of the wind. Niggas on the corner trying to win. Chicago, nigga. Stay hustling in the snow. Niggas even hustling in the snow. Yeah, you see them blue lights in the air. Cameras everywhere. We don't give a fuck, we still tip. Chicago nigga, where they hustle in the snow, snow. niggas even hustle in the snow, uh, Chicago yeah, nigga. Players in a home to all the gangsters Well you better pick a side if you plan to make it And when you ride through the shack, keep that head straightened Before they find you tied up in that pitch black basement Cameras on the pole flicking pictures, niggas still pitching Got the block, jalapeno hot, but it's still tipping Slickers flipping on me, trying to plan a itchy on me Cause they ran my government, name and got the history on me You know we gang pain in Chicago Even though the structure done changed in Chicago 
uh, that wind blowing in Chicago And when I'm out of town, I let them know I'm from Chicago, Chicago nigga This the city of the wind Niggas on the corner trying to win Chicago, nigga Stay hustling in the snow Niggas even hustling in the snow You see them blue lights in the air Cameras everywhere We don't give a fuck, we still tipping Chicago, nigga where they hustle in the snow, snow. Niggas even hustle in the snow Chicago nigga The hour will be right back. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's following segment has been brought to you by the best kava and kratom around at Mitra 9. Mitra 9.com. M I T R A 9.com. At checkout. Use keyword hobby, H-O-P-P-E, to save 20% on the best kava and create them around. And now, something completely different. If a radio show was an energy drink, it would be hoppy hour. Hoppy hour where your medical card is required to listen. Please don't be offended. He's sorry in advance. It's time for Hoppy in the morning. Happy hour. Happy hour. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. Lights are bright, the night's alive Ryan Hoppy's where we thrive Laugh and chat until we're free Hoppy out, just you and me Drinks are cold, the vibe is right We won't stop until daylight Raise your glass, oh, yeah. make a toast 856-49 Hoppy It's 856-494-6773 You can tweet at me At Ryan Hoppy Radio And you can always email me Ryan Hoppy Radio at gmail.com Alright So right here Is a very interesting clip This is Hugh Hefner's Ex-wife going on The Kyle and Jackie O show Which is absolutely Positively probably top seven favorite radio shows of all time they're in australia and they're really dirty and you would go to um p diddy's parties as well back in the day right um i remember just going to like one or two but like again like i had a great time in in my youth (laughs) like i don't really see anything like i never saw anything really bad yeah. happening around me yeah. um the- se- sex is sex in my opinion yeah so i'm not saying that um you know something bad didn't happen I'm- she doesn't know what the hell to say she's like i just was hooking up saying that you know um nothing bad ever happened to me and that you never saw anything out of the ordinary that you wouldn't usually see at a big hollywood party you know yeah. it's sexualized it's in, look in a way. you're going to the playboy mansion yeah. what do you you know there's girls topless in the grotto don't yeah. we already know that is that like, grotto gross it was pretty nasty yeah it seemed i didn't it. i didn't like going in there it was like foamy and stuff I know. it always it was, was so horrible Oh, it sounds so awful. If it was so awful, why were you a playmate? Oh, that's right. You have really no other redeeming talents, and you were riding off the cloud of Hugh Hefner. Let's just be honest here. Also here, more than half of Americans with STIs were infected by cheating partners. 
STIs, STDs. It's funny. To me, it's like when you go to a state and it's like, oh, I got an OTI or I got a DUI or DWI where there's always different ways of saying the same thing. Like I say STD. I don't say STI. But it says right here that uh, more than half of Americans with STIs were given to it by a cheating partner. And um, it's definitely one of the weird parts about cheating is, uh, especially when you're around it, especially in radio where a lot of people on radio are sluts. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't just discriminate against women uh, at all. Actually, the men in radio are more slutty than the women, to be honest. The women in radio are all about empowerment and being woke. The men are trying to get their rocks off because they were never cool growing up. So, wow, I got a morning radio show. Let's cheat on our wives. Um, But what I'm saying to you, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, is when you're around cheating and you're around infidelity, it's not that you think it's right or wrong, but you become numb to it, especially when people will ask you about it. Oh, does this person cheat on their wife? And you're like, what do you want me to say to that? Travis Kelsey's mom, Donna, admits the chief star loves attention. Mm-hmm. So yesterday I played the clip, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, of her saying, I don't know Taylor, blah, 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 and sounding very dismissive. I have a feeling, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that Donna Kelsey and Travis Kelsey are, are in a bit of a rift. It's like they text each other, good night, love you, but I don't see them talking right now. I do see that Jason Kelsey probably is keeping everybody happy, keeping everybody right in the middle. Because Jason Kelsey is the normal one. I mean, yeah, he's like Bert Kreischer as a football player, just drinks all day and has his shirt off and parties. But uh, at the same time, it's like you look at these Kelsey brothers and you're like, they literally are just another form of morbid, mortal human beings. They're going to die someday. But because they play football and because they're dating Taylor Swift, they're all of a sudden more interesting. Like they have drama just like us. They're just more famous. So last year, there was a picture of Patrick Mahomes' dad bod, quote-unquote dad bod. He looks better than me, and I'm in pretty good shape, but I got a little bit of a gut. But I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, all the online trolls, the same ones that listen to bad podcasts that are ripping to other people, were saying he had a dad bod, even though he's won like three Super Bowls. It's not like when um, Jamarcus Russell was in the league and he was out of shape. Now, that's somebody you go, that's a bad body. But Patrick Mahomes' trainer says that having a dad bod is a good thing. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, his trainer went on to say, I don't need him to look like a model because the way he chooses to play requires a certain type of physicality. And that physicality needs more body fat. That is a core belief that I do have for him. I 100% agree with that because a lot of baseball players are in kind of weird shape. And his dad was a baseball player and also a drunk with many DUIs who thinks he's above the law because he kind of is. So he kind of comes from that life of like being around a baseball player. So when he throws the football, it's almost like watching a pitcher because he, he almost played professional baseball. So he's more a baseball pitcher. He's like a baseball player as a quarterback. It's quite fascinating to watch. I don't know. I want to like Patrick Mahomes, but the Chiefs are in that territory of being like the Patriots where it's just they're so good for so long that it's a very hard to like them. Diddy ate off naked women at the botched Miami party attended by Will Smith and Owen Wilson in 2004 photos. <laughs> Man, if I'm Hollywood, I am freaking out right now. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, they are getting exposed more than I possibly could have imagined them getting exposed. Like I knew this was going to get bad. When the Me Too movement began in 2017, in the winter of 2017, I knew things were going to get called out. But this has been absolutely, positively magnificent to see. And now, if you want to keep in touch with everything going on in the Diddy case, there's so many news clips about Diddy every day that I'm compiling them every day if I talk about Diddy and putting it on my YouTube, at Ryan Happy Radio. It's called 
I don't know. I don't want to call it today in Diddy News or something, but it says Ryan Hoppy of Hoppy Hour because I do that for search engine optimization to show up on Google. Everyone's like, why do you put your name in every video so that it shows up on Google when you type in my name? If you want to see the latest of the day for news about Diddy, each video will have the date. Because I put up like reels of different podcasts and I rile people up on YouTube, but I was noticing that like, it was like I was talking about Diddy for 20 minutes a show, which is fine. But then it's like, I'm going to make 12 videos about Diddy. It's like, Come on now, you're going to separate it. That's the radio mind in me. Speaking of Diddy. When they were young bucks growing up and they were getting in a lot of trouble themselves. So, hey, I was like, why don't you come hang out with me? Did Sean Diddy Combs extend a royal invite to one of his now infamous parties? Of course he did. They're wondering if Prince William and Prince Harry went to any of his parties. We know that in the 2000s, Prince Harry was a dog. That he, ruff, ruff. He also did a lot of coconut. And the thing that I find interesting is that nobody wants to talk about Prince Andrew hanging out with Jeffrey Epstein. So uh, that's their uncle. It's their blood. Mm -hmm. They're all creeps. The hip hop mogul recalled wanting Prince Harry and Prince William to join his guest list, sharing in a resurfaced interview with Graham Norton in 2011 that the brothers were once welcome in his social circle. Did he explain that he understood the princes were likely unavailable as they started settling into their adult roles and responsibilities at that? Yeah, that's funny. Literally by him saying that he knows they're going to be busy with responsibilities, that's implying that they had a life, that they had things going on. And that Diddy is a grown child. Time, But he went on to note that he thought they could have fit in a few years earlier. You know, before when they were young bucks growing up and they were getting in a lot of trouble themselves. Yeah, when they're getting in a lot of trouble when they're 14 years old. That's the prime age if I'm Diddy. So, hey, I was like, why don't you come hang out with me? Though Harry and William are not believed to have ever taken Diddy up on the offer, they did meet and pose for photos with the rapper at a 2007 star-studded concert event for their... I saw this picture. <laughs> oh, this cracked me up. There's a radio DJ in Tampa Bay who's worked at various stations. Nice guy. I've worked with him. He's very nice. And he posts a picture of him and Diddy. It must have been like 24, 25 years ago. Had that early 2000s look where they're wearing like baggy clothes or whatever. And he ended up closing the, the uh, captions on his picture. <laughs> but he put the caption as, this is me and one of Diddy's freak offs. <laughs> and everybody was like either laughing or offended. And then he had to put disclaimer, this is just a joke. And I was like, I don't know if I would have posted that, bra, but it was funny. Late mother, Princess Diana, and he and Graham appear to agree that the extent of their relationship likely ended there. I do worry because I read that on your kind of that you want to get uh, Prince William and Prince Harry to. Why does people in Britain, even the way they talk, they just sound smarter than us? Unless it's Pierce Morgan. He sounds like an idiot. You want to get uh, Prince William and Prince Harry to uh, to a ditty party. I don't think not 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 anymore. I mean, before, you know. <laughs> Don't no, ruin our royal no, no, wedding yeah, for us. <laughs> Trust me, they're off the list. Indeed, William went on to marry Princess Catherine just months later, and the pair share three children, while Harry and wife Meghan Markle tied the knot in 2018. And oh, whatever. They're just going through the resume of everybody's life. 856-49-HOPPY. It's 856-494-6773. Now, speaking of Diddy... I thought this next headline was interesting. Diddy's lawyer is just saying a bunch of nothing to fill space because he knows that his uh, client is very guilty. Like, there's some clients that are kind of guilty. <laughs> no, Diddy's like 100 million percent guilty. So his lawyer, uh, I'll talk about it in a second with Costco. But first, this is Diddy's lawyer right here talking about how it's the feds trying to bring down a successful black man. 
from someone in the mafia. I don't know that I could keep him off the stand. He is very eager to tell his story. They're gonna show that video over and over and over about what happens to women that won't change their stories. His reputation uh, is over. The United States government, they start making this case as a takedown of a successful black man. TMZ presents the downfall of Diddy, the indictment, now streaming on Tubi. Let's switch our focus to the government. In my opinion, I'm just gonna say it the way it is, no, no friend historically of the successful black man, okay? None. And th your client, I know you're having to defend him, but your client is a scumbag. It doesn't matter what color skin he has. He is a rapist, he is a thug, and he's probably at least, at the very least, had people killed. They start making this case, in my opinion, as a takedown of a successful black man. This is the government scrutinizing his businesses. His businesses are fine. Scrutinizing the taxes. He pays his taxes. He does everything right. I said this before on the show, but get you somebody who defends you behind your back like Diddy's lawyer. What's the last vestige? We're going to go into his bedroom. We're going to go into his bedroom because maybe we don't like the way he's having sex. Here's a man who has made some of the most important businesses owned by a black man. Yeah, he just said that part about they don't like uh, how he's having sex. Yeah, it's not good to have sex with underage people, bruh. Run, owned, created, founded. The vision was that of a black man. What have we done? We have reduced him, not everyone, but a large amount of, of our society to being a monster. I'm telling you right now, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is absolutely utter nonsense in the way that we all know that Diddy's guilty, but this is just his lawyer stalling and stalling. Because the thing the lawyer's really good at is when he starts talking, you forget what you were even originally asking him. Whoa! Happy Hot Topic! He must be the worst to argue with. Costco responds after Diddy's attorney suggests the rapper bought baby oil in bulk from the retailer. In a recent preview of TMZ's upcoming documentary, The Downfall of Diddy, The Indictment, Sean Diddy Combs lawyer Mark Agnafilo was asked why the music mogul had such a large stash of personal lubricant and baby oil, which, according to authorities, was over 1,000 bottles altogether. Agnafilo told the outlet in the preview of Diddy, he has a big house, he buys in bulk. I think they have Costco's in every place where he has a home. The attorney then joked, have you sat in the parking lot of a Costco and see what people walk out of there with? That's the weird part is like your client is literally being charged with the worst crimes ever. And you're just like, <laughs> I'm going to make jokes. Now Costco is addressing Agnafilo's claim, telling TMZ that none of the company's U.S. locations carry baby oil. In the clip, Agnafilo also disputed authorities' claim of the amount of bottles found, saying, I don't think it was a thousand. Let's just say it's a lot. And in a new preview of the special released September 26th, the attorney reveals that the rapper intends to testify during his upcoming trial. Agnafilo says in the teaser, I don't know that I could keep him off the stand. Yeah, you probably should. Let's just be honest here. 856-49-HOPPY. That's 856-494-6773. Speaking of corruption, there are calls for the mayor to resign after he was indicted by the federal government today on corruption and bribery charges. The indictments were revealed this morning, just hours after a pre-dawn raid on the mayor's mansion. Les Trent with more on the chaos. Yeah, you're going to have to drag Eric Adams out of his office. He's not going to be like, oh, bye bye. <laughs> a power hungry sociopathic dirtbag. It's an only in New York moment as hecklers try to shout down Mayor Eric Adams after his bribery indictment by a federal grand jury. That's a good point. You are a disgrace to all black people in this city. He makes them look bad. He appeared outside Gracie Mansion, surrounded by his closest allies. He has that like Jason Whitlock energy, and Jason Whitlock is a Republican kind of like black man who doesn't seem to like being black and writes all these hateful articles about black people, kind of like uh, Candace Owens. I will continue to do the job for 8.3 million New Yorkers that I was elected to do. The 92-year-old civil rights leader, Hazel Dukes, gave the hecklers a piece of her mind, and then some. 
Would you be quiet? <laughs> no. Would you shut up? And as the embattled mayor turned to leave, he was bombarded with demands to step down. Resign! 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 The U.S. attorney in Manhattan, Damian Williams, announced the historic indictment today. Mayor Adams engaged in a long-running conspiracy. This guy that's announcing it looks so excited. Like, you know that Eric Adams probably treated him badly, and he's like, sorry, bitch. In which he solicited and knowingly accepted illegal campaign contributions from foreign donors and corporations. According to the 57-page indictment, yeah. Adams accepted free travel and business class upgrades and other freebies from the government of Turkey. I'm sure he is such a generous tipper if he's going around getting these freebies. <laughs> the indictment says the freebies included stays at the $3,000 a night Bentley suite at the St. Regis Hotel in... I'm sure he didn't cheat on his wife there. Istanbul. In exchange, Adams is accused of arranging for the Turkish consulate building in Manhattan to open without a fire inspection, despite being unfit for occupation. This ah, whatever. We're going to move on. I've been saying if I'm bored, you're bored. Uh, sometimes I'm a little depressed because of my bipolar, but I'm able to say, hey, at least I don't live in New York City. Happy hour. Happy hour. RyanHoppyRadio.com. Happy hour will be right back. Whenever we're going outside, um, we all I smell is poop. As a reminder, if you don't feel like listening to this next song, you can skip over it. But Ryan Hoppy of Hoppy Hour takes pride in his selection, so stick around, folks. <laughs> Shake your prayers in this cap, get the snap in your head. 
the point of that song maybe i'm wrong ladies and gentlemen boys and girls but i think the point of that song was to let us know that there was a money snap mm-hmm. 856-49 happy it's 856-494-6773 people ask why i do mm-hmm. you know what the official answer is the mm-hmm. hour will be right back Oh, yeah. This following segment has been brought to you by the best Delta 8 CBD honey around at DZBZHoney.com. It comes in a lollipop. Lilla lick the lollipop, the rapper. It comes in a honey stick or a jar of honey. When you go to DZBZHoney.com and use keyword hoppy, H O P P E. This is also being brought to you by Fortify.com, F-O-R-T-I-F-E-Y-E.com. The best pre and post workout in all of the Bay Area and the world. I'm thinking worldwide, not just the Bay Area where I live. Mm-hmm. When you go to Fortify.com, use keyword Ryan20 at checkout. This is also being brought to you by Counseling on Call.net. Times are hard right now. And if you need help with your mental health, go to counselingoncall.net and tell them that you heard about it from Happy Hour. This is also being brought to you by Rich Kaylee Master Barbershop at richkbarber.com, 4545 West Kennedy Boulevard in Tampa. When I tell you that he is the best barber in all of the Bay Area, I am a man of my words. Go to richkbarber.com, sign up for an appointment, and at checkout, Use keyword happy when you're there in person. That made no sense, but we're going to move on. Mm -hmm. Any other radio show would have edited that out. Me, I'm human, and this is a human experience. Also, I'm going to let the beat drop. This is handbooked with Late Night Drive. This is Lex from the Lex and Terry Radio Network. We've been around a long time, which is code for old as F. Now, back to the up and coming Ryan Hoppy. Being a man slut was a podcast. It would be Hoppy Hour with Ryan Hoppy. Hoppy Hour. Hoppy Hour. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most 
listen to a radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. Ryan's tall like the sky. Six for nine, he's fly. From Chicago to the Bay. He'll say Pete, he'll stay. Talk of love and fame. Dating life's his game. News all stars he spills. With laughter fills. Happy hour, all you need. Oh, sure. Rich and Ely, take a seat. Got it. Ryan's got the group. Oh, I do. Happy hour. You move. 856 49 Hoppy. 856-494-6773. You can tweet at me at Ryan Hoppy Radio. And you can always email me, Ryan Hoppy Radio at gmail.com. Let's get back into the content. Right now on Hoppy Hour. When I tell you we have so much to get into, I am being a hundred percent truthful because I am. A man of my words. So, happy hour, all you need. Rich and Healy, take a seat. Oh, happy hot topic. Savannah Chrisley is speaking out about her mother's resentencing. <laughs> oh, she's so delightful looking, but you know she's probably insufferable to date. During a September 25th press conference outside of the United States District Court for the Northern District of Georgia in downtown Atlanta, mm -hmm. the 27-year-old blasts the judge who upheld Julie Chrisley's seven-year prison sentence for her 2022 conviction of tax evasion and bank fraud. I don't know why, even though she's rich in a lead and she's a dummy, why she would think her parents would get away with tax evasion and bank fraud. That's a pretty big deal. Saying, I'm very disappointed. But the judge showed her cards, and I think if people do their research on this judge and see how many times she's been reversed and remanded back, it'll tell us enough. Or maybe that your parents committed a crime, you sociopath. So we're going to move forward with appealing this sentence, and that'll happen within the next 14 days. And guess what will happen, Savannah? It'll get upheld again. <laughs> you have no shot. During Julie's court appearance, the former reality star issued a tearful apology, both to the court for her actions and to her children for having to deal with the legal fallout. I'm sorry, y'all. However, Savannah says the court didn't take her mother's remorse or good behavior in prison into account for the... No, because you committed tax evasion and bank fraud. Almost no celebrities ever get off on that. Resentencing, which... What about Mike the Situation? What about Wesley Snipes? That's not a crime you do. They're dumb as hell for thinking they'd get away with it. He believes is a miscarriage of justice. Explaining, we've seen the injustices happen time and time again. Mm -hmm. And the prosecutors here, they're absolutely ridiculous. And clearly, they're uneducated. Oh, um, you're clearly uneducated if you think your mom deserved to get out. So what has happened is an injustice. Oh, okay. I feel so bad for you. The podcast host then addresses alleged remarks made by the federal judge during Julie's hearing that claims Savannah has been using her family's legal troubles for media attention. Duh, you have nothing else. <laughs> I really like this judge. Clapping back to say that it is for TV ratings or for podcast ratings is laughable because both of my parents are sitting in federal prison. So this has nothing to do with ratings. But it's all you've talked about on your podcast. <laughs> Julie's husband and Savannah's father, Todd Chrisley, is currently serving 12 years behind bars for his own tax evasion and bank fraud convictions. And despite this latest legal setback, Savannah says she will not stop advocating for her parents' release. Ah, well, good luck with that. Might as well collect baseball cards. That's a little more meaningful than this. There were a lot of tears this morning inside the Today Show studios. Hoda is leaving after 26 years at NBC. Oh, wow. The beloved anchor said she came to the difficult decision during a period of reflection on her 60th birthday. Yeah, having an end-of-life crisis. 
And I remembered standing outside looking at this beautiful bunch of people with all these gorgeous signs. And I thought, like, this is what the top of the wave feels like. <laughs> She's like, it doesn't get any better than this. Me. And I thought it can't get better. And I decided that this is, pro this is the right time for me to, to kind of move on. 48 days before today's bombshell announcement, Hoda hinted at change when we spoke at her 60th. How does this new decade feel? I feel like I'm blooming. I feel like I'm repotting. Like It's got to be weird having young kids and being like, I could be dead in three years. All those words, that's what it feels like. It feels like something new is happening with me. Other uh, that sounds fun. Her clues that she was thinking of an exit, a recent move to the suburbs, and her daughter's health crisis. It was a year ago that you first publicly shared about Hope's hospitalization. Yeah, there have been terrifying moments. Obviously, I had my kiddos late in life, and I was thinking that they deserve a, a bigger piece of my of my time pie that I have. No. That's a frightening thing to think about. Uh, you have a finite amount of time. Just the word time pie is very deep. It's taking the news uh, worse than Savannah got. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Savannah joked during today's third hour that she was drinking and eating her feelings away. We spoke to her exclusively minutes later. I love know? Hoda so much. Yeah, she called me and told me just a few days ago. And what was your reaction? Despair yeah. and joy. joy. Uh, she's like, oh no, the person that brings in ratings what are we going to do now? <laughs> no! Happy Hot Topic! Chicago Bulls legend Derrick Rose is calling it a career. The NBA superstar announced his retirement today. As our it's so sad about what Derrick Rose could have been. I was a senior in high school in 2012 watching the first uh, round of the playoffs. It was the Chicago Bulls versus the Philadelphia 76ers. And when Derrick Rose was in, because the coach, Tom Thibodeau, who's now the coach of the Knicks, he is notorious for running his players into the ground. And he would play Derrick for like the whole game. And that's essentially what happened. Our Suzanne Lemonio shows us Rose's humble beginnings on the South Side gave him a perspective filled with gratitude that shaped his life and career. This basketball court at Simeon Career Academy has created many fond memories for head boys basketball coach Timothy Flowers. To be the coach here now is all special because I'm able to live those moments on a day-to-day -day basis. Winning a lot of games here, watching some amazing highlights that Derek had, that our team had, um, the bonds that we had. Derek would be Derek Rose. This is a photo of Rose and Flowers taken on the Simeon court their junior year. The pair played on the Wolverines basketball team from their freshman to senior years. Rose led the team to two straight city and state championships in 2006 and 2007. It was really meant to be that Derrick Rose was on the Bulls. It's just heartbreaking. If you weren't in Chicago, it was hard to explain. He just always had a vision for himself. Rose would go on to fame in the NBA beginning with his time in 2009 as a starting point guard with the Chicago Bulls, becoming Rookie of the Year and MVP in 2011. Yeah. Flowers had a courtside seat to Rose's success. For the first eight years of his NBA career, Flowers was Rose's promotions manager. Flowers says Rose never forgot where he came from and surrounded himself with close friends and coaches he called mentors as he climbed the ladder to success. Hell yeah. Derek Rose grew up in a second floor apartment in this building here at 73rd and Marshfield. Flowers lived just eight houses away down the block here in Englewood. That's a bad neighborhood in Chicago. Flowers says witnessing crime in the neighborhood while growing up shaped Rose into the man he would become. That's the biggest thing that I think people don't know about Derek, how much of a giver he is. Uh, at that time. With giving back in mind, Rose took 15 top performing Simeon students to Senegal in 2022. Flowers says the moment was filled with mentorship and empowering the young men with advice to achieve their dreams. With all the success Rose has achieved, Flowers says in retirement, Rose will focus on two new roles that are his passion, being a father and husband. <laughs> uh, I was going to say something about his wife, but I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. When he wanted to choose his family over the game of basketball, he did it. He's at a point where it's like he feels like he can give more to the world. He feels like because of his story and our stories that he can tell them and he can motivate that next wave of people. And Flowers says there's no doubt in his mind. Derrick Rose will continue to inspire generations to come. 
Here's the thing, though. A lot of people, if you were not in Chicago, you didn't get how exciting it was. And I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, he is the 2000s and 2010s Penny Hardaway. You never know what he could have been. It's like another version of Grant Hill or Tracy McGrady. Here's the deal. I 100% believe he should be in the Hall of Fame. Mm-hmm. No! Happy Hot Topic! 500 pounds. I'm the strongest heavyweight in existence. No spot. Ooh, there you go. You got it. Yeah, look, he's the bull. I'm the matador. That was a video of uh, Jake Paul lifting. I will give it to him. The guy's in good shape. He may not be a very good fighter, but he's a good showman. Speed and timing beats power. I saw him with his shirt off over there. He's fat. Seems Mike Tyson's Jake Paul taunt got a little too real. Can I please have uh, 55 McDoubles, 25 fries, 100 nuggets, and 15 shakes? I already gave him his warning. Fight like your life depends on it because it does. Jake knocking out some reps in a fat suit for laughs on Instagram. <laughs> before facing the real-life knockout champion in November on Netflix. I'm telling you, this fight's going to be very interesting. I've never watched the Jake Paul fight, to be honest, but I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that uh, Mike Tyson I would not want to mess with. No spot. Come on, come on, man. All right, it's just video of him lifting. We got it. You're in shape. Mm-hmm. Just got to do what makes you happy. Lana Del Rey seemingly happy in love and now looking to take her relationship with alligator tour guide Jeremy Dufresne to the next level. Hell yeah, you're just some average alligator tour guide, almost a tool guide. Hopefully he's not a tool. And then Lana Del Rey ends up becoming your fiance. That's quite the accomplishment. All right, I got to skip over this because of copyright, but yeah, she's engaged to an alligator guide. That is so awesome. Mm-hmm. 856-49-HAPPY. Now, I didn't even know that Melania Trump could speak, and I'm not seeing this in a demeaning way. I've literally never heard her talk until now. Whoa! Happy Hot Topic! Did you and Donald Trump, did you ever talk about having more children? Did you want a larger family? Melania Trump is opening up about her and Donald Trump's parenthood perspectives. In a sit-down interview on Fox & Friends, the former first lady reflected on having their son Barron, and revealed that while her husband had hoped to grow their family, she had a different mindset. I'm going to be honest. I think there's more than enough Donald Trumps out there, enough Trump kids. Uh, we don't need any more. I was always um, perfectly fine with one. Mm-hmm. And uh, Donald was inc- encouraging to have more. And I said, like, I'm, I'm completely fine with one. I'm good. Plus, you keep going out at night to hang out with Stormy Daniels. You're not exactly father of the year. Melania shared that one was the right number for her due to the hectic nature of their lives. It's very busy life, and I know how busy he is, and I'm in charge of everything, so. (laughs) She's pretty much saying he's a deadbeat. He just writes the check. That's why it's, uh, it's, it's just perfect. Baron is now 18 and a college student, and Melania shared that she's proud of the person he's grown up to be. His strength, his intelligence, his knowledge, his kindness, it's admirable. And um, he's enjoying his college days. So he's the opposite of his father. I hope he will have a great experience because his life is very different than any other 18, 19 year old child. Yeah, can you imagine that being your father? Baron is studying at New York University, and Melania shed light on his choice of school and current living situation. I could not say I'm an empty nester. I don't feel that way. Mm-hmm. I I raised Baron as a own person. You notice she said I raised him, not we raised him? And gave him his own yes and no's. I respect that. Uh, it was his decision to come here that he wants to be in New York and study in New York. And you should. It's where your dad is the king. And live in his home. And I respect that. Less than two months before Barron started college, there was an assassination attempt made against his father at a... Ra- yeah, we know. We don't need to go over that. I love these videos when they recap it as if there was someone that didn't see it. Um, Here's the thing, though. I would definitely want to live at home if I was Barron, too, because you never know who's out to get you. Now, this next headline, 
I find absolutely positively. Whoa! Happy Hot Topic! There's a new legal battle brewing. Richard Simmons' family versus his housekeeper of nearly four decades. At stake, his estimated $20 million estate. Teresa has been with me for 30 years. I don't know why this woman thinks she's the one that deserves the money. Oh, she's a dirty, rotten, money-hungry piece of garbage. So we're like an old married couple. In a just-filed petition, Teresa Rivellas claims Richard's brother, Lenny, pressured her into giving up her role as a co-trustee of the late fitness guru's estate just days after his death, when she was in a state of grief. I love her and she loves me. Teresa alleges she didn't understand what she was signing during a meeting held directly after an open casket viewing of Richard's body. But she signed anyway, concerned she could lose her rights to his inheritance. Now she's asking a court to restore her title of co-trustee in order to carry out Richard's wishes. When was the last time you saw Richard in person? It's probably been about six and a half years. There was a time where he just wanted to be alone. That's his brother. But Richard's brother Lenny is firing back, calling the allegations demonstrably false in a statement via That's a big word! Family spokesperson Tom Esty, adding that Richard would be heartbroken to learn of Teresa's greed. Among the family's claims, Teresa is still a significant beneficiary of Richard's will. She's still staying in his Hollywood Hills home and has attempted to charge the estate for her living expenses. Back in 2016, Richard refuted rumors she was holding him hostage. It's just nice to be at home and share my life with Teresa. Remember, Teresa was the one who found Richard dead in his room in July, one day after his 76th birthday. Ah, that was sad. 856 49 happy that's 856-494-6773 now here's mr feel bad for me Whoa! Happy hot topic. i've recently been diagnosed with parkinson's this is also a cause dear to my heart nfl hall of fame quarterback brett Favre reveals he's battling parkinson's disease bad things happen to good people bad things happen to to athletes bad things happen to celebrities so we're, we're all in this together. He seems like such a dirtbag. The athlete sharing he was diagnosed with the degenerative disorder while testifying at a congressional hearing on Tuesday about the misuse of welfare funds in Mississippi, the controversy he's been embroiled in since 2020. Yeah, so now he's bringing it up because we all need to feel bad for Brett Favre. Sadly, I also lost an investment in a company that I believed was developing a breakthrough concussion drug. I thought it would help others, and I'm sure you'll understand why it's too late for me because I've recently been diagnosed with Parkinson's. This is also a cause dear to my heart. Oh, uh, really? Studies have shown an increased risk of developing Parkinson's in those who suffer concussions. Some Whoa, you're telling me getting a concussion is not a good thing? Wow, breaking news from Entertainment Tonight. Happy hour. Happy hour. RyanHoppyRadio.com. Happy Hour will be right back. I'll kick you in the nuts and we'll call it a day. As a reminder, if you don't feel like listening to this next song, you can skip over it. But Ryan Hoppy of Hoppy Hour takes pride in his selection, so stick around, folks. <laughs> Yeah. We be getting choked out, choked out, choked out, choked out. We be 
Hour will be right back. Oh yeah, this following segment has been brought to you by Mitra Nine, the best Kaba and Kratom around. Mm-hmm. Go to mitra-nine.com and I check out. Use keyword Hoppy. H O P P. Call Hoppy now. 856-49-HOPPY. Tweet at him at Ryan Hoppy Radio. Call. Damn, son, where'd you find this? On dating apps, he's six foot nine, but in reality, he's six foot eight and a half. Stations are tuned in too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Spin the dial, tune in. It's Hoppy Hour Show. Out of Temple Bay, where the good vibes flow. Ryan Hoppy got the scoop, hot gossip and toast. Celebrity news, dating tips, we all in the know. Hoppy Hour, where Ryan is the place to be. Celebrity buzz, the love lies free. 85649467. Call up, spill your tea, live on the frequency. Yeah. Something about stars, scandals, and affairs. No! Happy Hot Topic! We're going to the latest on the race for the White House. Kamala Harris set to make her first trip to the border since entering the race. <laughs> Wasn't this dirty, rotten broad in charge of that? And this is the first time she appeared? <laughs> She's the worst. White House correspondent Mary Bruce is on the scene in Arizona. Good morning, Mary. Good morning, George. Well, immigration has been one of Kamala Harris's greatest vulnerabilities. In- it's Kamala in this race. And today she is going to tackle the issue head on, making her first visit here to the border since entering the race. We- All right. I'm not going to even let them give her that propaganda of taking it head on. 
Yeah, she literally waited forever and ever to address it. She's an imbecile. She's a side chick as a presidential candidate. Here is James Corden talking about Ozempic. But if we accept for a moment that it is real and it's a substance that's very, very, very hard to give up if you have an addictive personality. Yeah, you like being skinny because you don't want to work out because you're fat. Then the world suddenly makes sense. Yeah. The government here spend a full. Fortune. I'm sure they do in the States saying fresh fruit and fresh vegetables mm. and stuff like that. And you think, yeah, we know. Yeah, well, we, that's th- we know how to eat properly. Well, that's what's interesting. I tried Ozempic. Oh, and really? this won't be surprising to you that when you look at me now that it didn't really work. I tried it for a bit. And then I, what I realized was I was like, oh, no, no. Nothing about my eating has anything to do with being hungry. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. All this does is make you feel not hungry. <laughs> but it's, yeah. I'm very rarely yeah. eating. Yeah. Oh, I can eat through hunger. I'm, yeah. yeah. Like, Don't you worry I'm, about that. Like you're looking at someone who's eaten a king size. And when I say king size, I mean like one you give someone for Christmas, yeah. dairy milk. In a car wash. Ah, you sound like a delightful guy. Not at all. You're kind of a brat. 856-49-HOPPY. That's 856-494-6773. Black China Mm -hmm. has always seemed like kind of a, I don't want to say trashy, but she just kind of gives up that like weird vibe, man, of like, she just thinks that she's the smartest in the room and whatnot. And now you got Black China's mom, Tokyo Tony. <laughs> you literally could not make that name up. Like, if you were to tell me what's Black China's mom's name, I would have guessed Tokyo Tony. It's just very on par. And here is Tokyo Tony. Let me break something down to you, Hector. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Don't tell no motherfucking lies, bitch. <gasps> now we see where Black China gets her sassiness from. I beat your motherfucking ass like mm-hmm. the fuck I said I was. I said I was coming to L.A. and whoop your motherfucking ass for playing games with me and my motherfucking daughter. So now you want to play games and say she did that to you? This short, this little did that to you? No, I came down in and I beat your motherfucking ass. <laughs> I would not mess with her. I bet she's fun in bed. Go tell him that. Go tell him that. Talk about some you was motherfucking see. Nigga, no, you went to motherfucking see <sighs> after I finished your mother yeah. fucking ass like that. <laughs> now try it again. Oh, uh, she is frightening, but also kind of delightful in like a trash bag way. Um, So there's been rumors that uh, people are racist against Caitlin Clark and whatnot. And she addresses it. Caitlin, when your uh, head coach came out with a statement today saying she denounces all the racism that some people have felt in this league, um, players, trolls online, all those things, yeah. as one of the biggest stars in this league, what are your thoughts on the things not only your teammates have to endure, but just the entire... She's not one of the biggest stars. She is the biggest star in the league. Our league, and obviously, you spoke on this before, but just now yeah. that you're coaching your GM, we're talking about it as well. Yeah, it's it's definitely upsetting. I don't think there's nobody in our league should be facing any sort of racism, hurtful, disrespectful, hateful comments and threats. Um, you know, those aren't fans; those are trolls, and it's a real disservice to the people in our league, the organization, um, the WNBA. Um, but there are a, a lot of really good fans, whether they've been fans for twenty plus years or whether they're new fans in our league. Um, I think continuing to Uplift, uplift this league in a very positive light is the best thing that we can do because um, there are so many great players. There's so many great teams. There are so many positive storylines that can be written and celebrated. And for me, that's why I became a fan of this league is these people were my idols. I grew up wanting to be like them. You know, she's lying out of her ass. So um, I think continuing to, to uplift and, you know, represent this league in a positive way is the best thing that we can do. Yeah, and then you got Angel Reese claiming that the media is against her, (laughs) that they're trying to villainize her to create a narrative. This is what she uh, tweeted out, Angel Reese. The same Angel Reese that acted like such a villain in that championship game. 
a year and a half ago. For the past two years, the media has benefited from my pain and me being villainized to create a narrative. They allowed it. This was beneficial to them. I sometimes share my experiences of things that have happened to me, but I've always allowed this to happen to me for way too long, and now other players in the league are dealing with it and experiencing the same thing. This isn't okay at all. Anything beyond criticism about playing a game we love is wrong. We sorry i'm sorry to all the players that have to continue to experience the same thing i have this is why i started my podcast to take my voice back and create the narrative of who i really am at the end of the day i don't want an apology nor do i ever think this will stop but something has to change that is the most gen z thing i've ever heard you acted like a villain in the championship game and you literally are an immature brat of course you're going to be villainized. And honestly, if you were smart, you would use that as an option. You would go, hey, I'm going to embrace that role, but you're a dumbass. Tick tock, clocks a joke, we're playing cruel pranks. Hoppy's hour almost done, feels like robbery in banks. Ryan Hoppy on the mic, dropping wisdom, then streams. Syndicated sorrow, now it's time to shatter dreams. Oh, the hoppy hour is coming to a close. Radio waves fading like a wilting rose. Laughter and joy dissolving in the air, but we'll keep the rhythm. Oh, life's just so unfair. But the laughter's growing dim Eardrums missing Hoppy like fingers without rings DHX to FM Shout out to the street But soon the sound will vanish Like shadows in the heat Oh, the hoppy hour Is coming to a close Radio waves Fading like a wilting rose Laughter and joy Dissolving in the air But we'll keep the rhythm Oh, life's just so unfair Phone lines buzzing But the laughter's growing dim Drums missing, hoppy like fingers without rings DHX to FM, shout outs hit the street But soon the sound will vanish like shadows in the heat Oh, the hoppy hour is coming to a close Radio waves fading like a wilting rose Laughter and joy dissolving in the air But we'll keep the rhythm, oh, life's just so unfair Clockwork to a show, and now it's time to face the silence like a TV on snow. Riot Hoppy held the mic with humor so divine. The void left in our hearts wider than a canyon line. Line. Empty speaker silent by but coming to an end like a roller coaster stopping round the river's bend. Hoppy's jokes and jabs, these are daily grind. Now silence louder than the thoughts we can't rewind. Oh, the hoppy hour is coming to a close Radio waves fading like a wilting rose Laughter and joy dissolving in the air But we'll keep the rhythm, oh, life's just so unfair The hoppy hour is coming to a close Radio waves fading like a wilting rose Laughter and joy dissolving in the air But we'll keep the rhythm, oh, life's just so unfair Happy hour Happy hour RyanHoppyRadio.com And like that, he's gone. Whenever we're going outside, um, we all I smell is poop. I'll kick you in the nuts and we'll call it a day. Hoppy Hour is now over. <laughs> Hoppy Hour is now over. <laughs> Game over.